Hey, my name is Dublin from TSM, and here are my thoughts on the five best AD carries in the competitive scene right now. Okay, so Caitlyn sees a lot of play in North American solo queue. Sometimes sees play in LPL or LCK, but I feel like she's extremely strong for a lot of reasons and really easy to translate into solo queue. Uh, number one, she's obviously been the quintessential lane dominant AD carry for three or four years now. Uh, when you have to lane against Caitlyn, it's never fun. You're just getting poked. There's traps that limit your mobility. She's super hard to gank. She can push you in at any time, and at level 6 she has a lot of kill potential. So, I mean, this, coupled with the fact that she she's just super annoying to play against overall, really sucks. So you always want to be on the Caitlyn side when you're speaking strictly laning phase. Um, past that, she got a lot of changes to her kit in the big Marksman update. She got her traps completely redone. And what that means is, biggest mistake I see, people still max E second. They still max her net second. Um, you want to be at max Q and then immediately go into W. This actually took me an entire week to get used to, but as soon as you hit level 13, you have level 5 traps. You can put down 5 traps in a matter of seconds and start laying siege to any tower or any objective you want. If people walk into the traps, you can crit them for like half their HP. Um, it's super powerful when people walk into traps, increases the damage of your headshot, gives you a 1300 range auto. Um, she's super good at controlling space and just creating opportunities where you can take an objective for free. So overall, I'd say she's really strong. She had a problem before translating her laning advantage to a win, but now when you win lane, you can straight up win the game with Caitlyn. Ezreal is really strong uh, and has picked pretty much every game he's up in LCK. So the reason why he's really good is because he has a safe laning phase and he has extremely high impact mid game. And the game is really revolved around how you can control the game from 10 minutes to 20 minutes. This is when you see cases of super extreme snowballing, like Immortals, who can just completely stomp a game before it hits the 20 minute mark. Usually the game ramps up right about 10 minutes when you hit your first item or, or first two items. Ezreal is one of those champions where he needs to get past that tier, which is kind of like a dip in his power, and gets to Man Immune, Iceborne Gauntlet, and just completely takes over the game from there. So, first you need to know how to build him. It's not like before you went, where you went Trinity Force, you're gonna go blue build. And if you're not very comfortable with that, you're gonna need to spend some time learning how to play blue build, which plays completely differently from every other AD carry. He's really skill shot reliant, so in competitive play, you see a lot of really high mechanic players who are able to land skill shots in clutch situations. If you're a low mechanic player, it's going to be kind of harder for you to play Ezreal because he does take a lot of fast fingers and muscle memory. But if you're able to pull off his combos and play him at a high level, he's super strong. He can completely take over a game and it's basically 1v5. There's not a lot of AD carries that can just walk up to the enemy team completely outnumbered, hit like three or four skill shots back to back, and turn the game around. Ezreal's just one of those champions where in competitive he'll always make his mark because he provides some of the best utility that an indie carry can give. There's a couple things that made blue build have a resurgence and Ezreal will have a resurgence in competitive play. Uh, number one is Infinity Edge Shiv is no longer like this godlike power spike that everybody needs to build or just lose. There was a time when Ash, Caitlyn, and Jinx, Tristana, actually maybe less Caitlyn, mostly just Triss and Jinx, took over games 1v5 because they built Infinity Edge into Shiv and they were untouchable. They just two shot everything. Um, they made AD carries, builds, and build paths a lot more balanced and less based around this huge two item spike that can one shot anything. Uh, now AD carries do a lot more consistent damage and have more utility. And they also changed the Iceborne Gauntlet. So combined with the fact that you don't have to lane against Infinity Edge Shiv anymore, uh, Iceborne Gauntlet got changed to give 20% CDR. And that's pretty huge because for blue build Ezreal, you want to hit 40% CDR as fast as possible. Before, it was impossible to get 40% CDR on two items and boots. But Lucidity boots got better and cheaper. Uh, Iceborne Gauntlet got better and gives more CDR. And because of that, Ezreal can reach his spike a lot sooner than he could before. Corky is really strong and competitive because he's a flex pick, which means you can play him mid or bottom. Uh, he provides something really unique to the AD carry rule, which is an AD carry that deals mostly magic damage, but scales off of AD. So before, Corky was kind of this mixed damage AD carry that didn't scale very well. Uh, now, he actually scales extremely well. They increased the scaling on his rockets to make it really, really good late game. 
and they didn't really touch the rest of his kit, they just gave him Package, which is really, really strong in competitive play. It allows you to control quadrants of the jungle that you wouldn't normally be able to with an AD carry. And he has a stable laning phase. His mid-game spike is really huge with Trinity. And then his second item spike is really strong. Overall, he just does everything. He pokes. He has good team fighting. He has good split pushing. He has a stable laning phase. He's really safe. He provides utility. Uh, always the meta champions for AD carries are the ones who can do everything. So Corky is definitely one of them. And on top of that, he's a flex pick. So... That's why I put him at a really strong number three. Uh, he's he's just always picked every game. Well, Faker brought out Corky mid a while ago, and since then everyone's kind of copied him. Corky mid is pretty much everything you want out of a mid laner. High pressure, uh, good roaming, mostly just like extremely high damage and good poke. He's able to clear waves when he's getting sieged on. He's also able to siege himself. Um, Corky doesn't have any sort of fall off at six items. I think he's still extremely good. Really, Corky's just a super versatile pick because you can put him in two spots, and he's possibly stronger mid than he is as an AD carry. But I'd still think he's an extremely good AD carry. Just in mid lane, he um, he just controls the game. I mean, when you watch Faker play him, he completely smashes lane. He roams a lot. He pokes a lot. Uh, that's why he's picked so much. I put Kalissa at number two. She has super high priority in all reasons right now, actually. Once again, meta AD carries tend to do everything, so she has a strong laning phase. She can also play safe with uh, just lessening with Q. She ha brings something unlike un any other AD carry, where she br uh, has initiation with her ulti, she c but she can also save her support when he gets caught. You can set up picks with her, you can set up team fights with her, uh, you can set up Pretty much everything. If you want to get vision, she's she's your man. She can put Ws, put ghosts everywhere, and make sure the support can safely walk in. Uh, she has great wave clear as soon as she gets hurricane, and she doesn't fall off. Uh, her biggest problem for a long time was Callista got us killed by everything. So after two items, it was super unclear like what was Callista supposed to do because AD carries simply outscaled her. But now that Rune on Hurricane gives crit, and AD build paths are slightly different. Callista doesn't fall off nearly as much as she did before, if at all. So, especially in this meta where everything is really squishy, and just getting the f jump on somebody with a Callista ulti will change the game. She is one of the top competitive AD carry picks, and she's also just one of the top picks in general. Like, even if you're playing solo queue, if you play AD carry, you need to learn how to play Callista. At number one, I put Lucian. So, if you break down the champion, he doesn't do nearly as much as some of the other AD carries, so his poke is weaker, and he has less utility for the team because he's a really selfish AD carry and requires a lot of resources. But in terms of like game impact, I think Lucian has the most potential to carry a game past like 15 minutes or 10 minutes. So his spike, his two item spike with Essence Reaver and Fire Cannon is one of the most broken spikes in the game. Um, Lucian just can just completely 1v5 games and despite the fact that he doesn't bring a lot of initiation tools like Kalista does or Poke like Quirky or sieging capabilities like Caitlyn, he just has that raw carry power where he just outputs so much more damage than all the other AD carries that uh, there's so much merit in picking Lucian. So if you, if you think about the game from early game, Lucian has an extremely strong 2v1 and also he's almost impossible to 2v2 against. At a super high level, most of the AD carries are about equal skill, and Lucian is so lane dominant that he's going to be able to win lane in almost every circumstance. So I might be kind of biased because I have a propensity to try to win lane really hard, but Lucian is so lane dominant that you're going to be able to get enormous CS leads over the opponent if you play properly, and if you have good duo synergy, every single game you should be up like 20 or 30 CS by the 15 minute mark and be able to snowball that into an objective or a team fight that you're going to be able to win. So because Lucian is always just one step ahead in the early game, he, he definitely is not like the best AD carry flat out when it's 200 CS to 200 CS, but he brings your team more options than most AD carries because of his lane dominance and how mobile he is. So while other AD carries are busy like catching waves or farming extremely slowly, Lucian is always able to push up his lane and come first, and I think that's such an undervalued attribute for an AD carry to have. The champion can 
push the wave instantly and come to the fight faster than their your counterpart can, like their AD carry can. Or he can just simply freeze the lane and bully him to make him miss CS. So because of that, he's one of the only AD carries with so many options. Every single time a wave hits, you get to choose what the enemy AD carry can do. That kind of power is some of that hidden power that a lot of people who watch games just simply they don't catch on to and they don't understand is there's simply some champions in the game where every time a wave hits and is on the map, they dictate the pace and they decide what the enemy can do. And that's so powerful in competitive play because if you limit your opponent's options and you choose for them, then you're always one step ahead. Thanks for watching this video and make sure to check out the rest of the guides over at lolclass.com.